Hey guys, so I had a few requests, or more than a few requests, to do a tutorial of how Erin and I make our hair wraps because we make hair wraps not on our head and then we attach them in our hair. I don't know if you can see, I'll show you guys when I take my hair down in a minute, but I've got two thicker ones um, that are a little bit thinner than my dreads. But we make them before we put them in our hair. And we do that by using um, some kind of base cord. So you could use a lot of like embroidery floss um, or wax cotton cording and that would make it thicker, but that's kind of a waste of expensive floss, the colored stuff. So what we have is we just have cotton cord and here's some. Um, this is like a shiny spool of it, but you can get some, you know, that's just regular unwaxed cotton cording. And what I did was I have dreads that are about as thick as my pinky finger, so I took about 12 pieces of this cord and put it together to make the cord. Erin used about six so that she could get a slightly thicker hair wrap. You know, it's basically just mimicking the hair that would have been in the center. And it also is easier to do the hair wrap when it's not on your head. Um, because you don't have to constantly look at a mirror, you can like attach it to your toe <laughs> and stick your leg away from you or um, tie it to a chair or something that doesn't move. So what you basically do is, since you're not really doing anything with the white cotton cording, that can be about six inches longer than you want the hair wrap to be. And the only reason you make it longer is because you want to be able to tie the end of it to something, and then of course you want to be able to tie the ends of it when you're done. And we just let our ends kind of dangle like fringe, but you can do whatever you want with that. So cut your cotton cording or whatever you're using, twine even works fine. Um, any kind of thicker yarn might work fine, although yarn is kind of squishy. Um, so something a little bit more durable. Um, and you can braid it or twist it first, but there's really no need to. So cut your, cut your cording and then get your colors ready. And the thing about the embroidery floss or the wax cotton cording, whatever you're using, um, that does definitely need to be longer. That being said, if you run out of cord, um, which tends to happen to us, um, you can always attach more. But what I do is I start with my colors, and I've already tied it here, I'm going to show you how I did that in a second. But I start with the colored ends, so here's where the white cotton cording ends, and my colors go almost another length and a half. So they're about two and a half times as long as... Um, my cotton cord and I usually just measure really quickly by taking um, measurements of my forearm so for me here's my embroidery floss if I hold the embroidery floss I measure to my elbow grab it measure to my elbow if it says not knotted grab it and so for my long dreads which go almost to my waist um, I take six of those measurements per cord and for me, you don't have to, but what I usually typically do is do two of each color. So I pick about four to five colors. This one I might have gotten a little excessive and done six. Um, but I'll do two cords or two threads for each color, and that's so that we can do some of the more funky, creative stitching stuff like the crisscross, but totally not necessary. And if you do pick something nice, like this white cotton cord for your center, you can also use it as like an accent cord, so that's kind of nice. If you use twine um, or something like really weird and colorful, you might not want to. Um, but yeah, pick your colors and gather some beads that are easy to thread. Um, and then once you've got those, you basically, you have to have a way to get this into your hair. So this looks a little bit messy up here, but we're gonna cut and trim it later. But what you wanna do is first you can tie your white cords together in just a messy knot, it's whatever. These are just gonna end up being trimmed off later and that's kind of trash. Um, we just have these extra ends so that I can tie it around like the legs of a chair so that I can pull on it and work on it. Um, but then this knot will eventually get cut off anyway. But so tie it in a knot. And then when you tie your colored cord in a knot, you want to tie it so that you end up with a loop. So you can just, I'm looking for something else to give you an example of. So if this was my colored cord, this macrame here, and I had a bunch of ends of this all together at the end, I would just cross it over with enough space where when I tied it, just making one little knot, I end up with a loop. And you can, 
have all of the threads be the loop. That's what I usually just do to have a thicker tie on. Um, or you can just make it so that a few of them are looped and the other ones are just long and stringy and you can trim those. And the reason that we do that is that's how you attach it. So if you have dreads, it's pretty easy because we just end up sticking this through the root of the dread and then feeding the hair wrap back through here and pulling it taut. If you don't have dreads, you can still easily get these into your hair. You can do a small micro braid, um, maybe a third as thick as your pinky. And then towards the top, you just do that same method. You would kind of pull the braid, stick the loop through, weave the uh, wrap right through there. Or if you want to, if you don't like the loop idea, what you can do is leave about six inches of, of some of the cord and then you can actually braid that in. Um, that will make the hair wrap a little bit longer um, and it may not stay as well, it might be more annoying. So those are just options. But so once you have the loop with your colored cord, I just use an extra junk piece of string to tie them together right below the knots. And that's just so that they stay together. And then um, I'm gonna tie this to something like a chair or even just make this into a loop and put this around my toe so I can pull on it. Here, I'll actually show you guys um, what Erin is doing. So Erin is actually just adding some details onto her finished hair up, but she's got her extra, and she already took off her cotton cording. So she's just using the loop that she already made and she's just got it looped around her toe so that she can work on it. And you can see she's already attached some beads and stuff, so that's kind of what we're gonna show you guys how to do. Yeah, and she's just playing at the end because she wanted some more decor. She already had it in her hair, but she took it out. <laughs> it's really easy to put in or take out, so we'll show you guys how we did it. Okay, friends, so we've got our white cording and I've tied my looped color to it. I'm gonna tie it to this chair. Move my giant first. Hopefully, these are long enough to just tie a few around the chair. This is just so that I can pull on it and um, it doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> See? Get this nice, taut place to make a hair up and you can you know tie it to anything you could also safety pin it to something and then I'm just gonna separate out my colors to see what I'm looking at so I've got about 12 pieces of cording um, which I will use for some decorative aspects and they're shorter um, than my long 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 colors so I'm going to decide what color to do with at the beginning. There's there's multiple stitches that we can use here, but it's basically a figure four stitch. So I usually like to use a brown at the top, just kind of so it blends in with my hair. So I'm going to pick this kind of sienna lighter brown, and I've got two of them, and I'm going to pull them separate. And this is the hard part. It's like not letting your colors get tangled because they're so long. So trying to separate out... And then, of course, untangle my bottoms so they don't get all screwy. And then I've got all the cording and all the colors except for my two browns. So the stitch goes something like this. I'm going to hold my cording and my central part taut, right? And I'm going to make a four. And then I'm going to cross it under, pull it through. And this is the part where you have to pull the whole length of the one cord or the two cord, you can do more than two cords if you want, you can do 10 cords at a time if you want. You have to pull it all the way through. Once it's there, it's kind of got this little knot and you're going to push it all the way up. Now, it's up to you whether you have these little um, stringies here at the top from doing the loop. If you wanted, you could try to work those into the cord so that they're kind of woven into the hair wrap or you could just cut them and do the hair wrap around them. So I'm actually going to try to work them in there. So I'm gonna redo this stitch just because I like to have it a little thicker at the top. So I'm gonna undo this. Put all of these cords together, including these little bits. Do my same mini figure four, pull it through. And this will get easier as this cord gets shorter, right? And then I'm gonna push that stitch up to the top, pull it taut. That's one stitch. I'm gonna do that again. And this part at the top is a little bit messy because of these little fringes. 
So just be patient with yourself and know that you can always take scissors to it afterwards and trim off the fringes. Take the stitch, pull it up. And what's gonna start to happen is we're just gonna start to keep putting those stitches one on top of another, you know, and you're forming as, as long of a space as you want for this specific color. So that kind of thing is really up to you. See, I'll just trim that little, that little guy off later. Okay guys, so I did like an inch or so of the brown and kind of trimmed off some of those little fuzzies. Um, and, but now I want to do something more exciting because that's not very exciting. So like I said, there's multiple things that you can do here. Um, I am feeling this kind of bluey, dirty green color. So I'm going to pull that one out. And there's two of them. And it's difficult, but I'm going to find them. If you hear weird noises in the background, that's Erin making her next hair up. <laughs> and I'm going to add the sienna back into the bunch. And again, here we have this issue of detangling ourselves. So trying to keep my ends from turning into a giant tangled mess. And then what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to do kind of like a stripe. So I'm also going to pull the mellow yellow, this kind of gold color. Because they look good together, this bluey green and this yellow. And first I'm just going to separate it out. But then I'm going to put it at the front because I actually do want it wound in. I don't want it to be an overlapping stripe right now, um, but I want it easily accessible. So I'm going to do that same stitch a few times with this green thread. So this figure four, for my four, wrap, pull, tighten, and you can actually use it, there's a little string that's gotta be cut right there. Um, but you can actually use your hands to kind of push it up, tighten it. Figure four, get that through there, push it up, pull it tight. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do four, with this, so that was three. Here is four. And then I'm gonna leave this on top and I'm gonna grab the yellow and I'm gonna do that four times. One. Two. three, four. Now what I could do is I could go back and forth and do that kind of dirty blue green and then the yellow. Or if I wanted to do something a little bit different, I could do one with both of them. So it's kind of going to be the striped appearance. So I've got all um, four cords here. Now I could separate it and just do one of each color. That's fine too, but I like it to use more because then it takes up more space and it goes a little bit faster. So I'm going to form my figure four. And I'm going to do a few stitches this way. One. Two. Three. I know. Huh? Yeah. Four. So I'm going to do four like that. And that kind of gives you a little bit of a striped appearance. And then I'm going to go back and forth and do four more of just the green, blue, and then four more of just the golden rod, and then again, four of them together. Excuse me, I love you, can you stop the thing? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I did that a few times. I did the blue, and then the yellow, and then the combination of the two to give a stripe, um, just as far as I wanted to, and then I put those back into the pile. Um, and then I pulled out this little salmon color, both threads, and I also pulled out two of the um, white cotton cords. And what I'm going to do with the white, actually, you know what? Instead of the white cotton cords, I want something a little less dramatic. So I've got some cream colored 
embroidery floss in here. I'm going to pick that out. And not only am I going to take this out of the pile, but I'm just going to toss it up to the side because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that for a crisscrosser later. So I'm going to do some beadwork and some crisscrossing to kind of just show you what you can do. And then I'll work down the length of it. So I'm just going to first give myself a little bit of this color to work with so it's not a sudden transition. And with the beads, you got to find something that have a big enough hole where you can get the embroidery floss through it. Um, which can be challenging. So just continuing the same figure four stitch. Now, I'll, people have asked if you could just make hair wraps with like twisting the thread around this, and you can, but it's much more likely to stay locked with this little figure four st uh, stitch. So, giving myself this little space, and if I was being really picky about this, I would be like counting how many stitches I did so that I could do the same number between beads. And then I'm going to put a bead on. Erin, what are you doing? I'm, I'm nothing. Erin's <laughs> looking for things. So I, I'm going to take one of these little gold beads and I'm just going to thread it through, actually I need both of the strands so. I'm going to thread it through both and they have a nice big hole so it's easy. Both my figure four stitch cords and I'm going to put it on the end. I'm going to leave it there and I'm going to continue stitching as normal. So with the bead on it, I might have to help push it up there, but mosquito. A hamster. <laughs> it's biting me. I gave it a chance. Okay, and then I'm just going to continue threading and you can see the little bead is right on there. Are these circles? Uh, is that, I think that was brand new, right? So it's probably falling. So, you know, it's up to you how much space you want between beads, but I like to have approximately even. I'm just gonna eyeball it since I didn't count. I've still got these uh, white cords off to the side because I'm gonna be using those later. That looks about ripe for another bead. So I'm going to dig around in there for one. Thread it through. continue stitching. Pretty simple. But this is really fun to do like if you're just like hanging out, chatting, or watching a movie. What else could you do while you're doing this, Erin? Um, sing. You can sing songs. You can sing songs, yes. Um, you, if you have to, like, if you're, like, stuck on the phone and to somebody that you, mm, you don't yes. really want to talk to. Great conference call thing. Yeah, yeah, conference calls. Work conference calls, calls. perfect. Um, where the house? Mm. If you're waiting for dinner to finish, it's um, great so that you don't start snacking mm -hmm. and ruin dinner. Because I'm really good at that. Yeah, I'm a big snacker. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm gonna put this next bead on. And just so you know, like you don't have to use embroidery floss. You can use yarn, um, that's a lot cheaper. Um, you can also use fabric scraps, especially if you want thicker ones. It can be really cute to use ribbon, fabric straps, little pieces of leather or fake leather. Um, what else could you use? Really anything. Twine, even like we said, macrame, that uh, kind of thin twine. Sometimes things get a little tangly, you just gotta work with it. Okay, so I'm gonna finish with this bead and then I'm gonna show you guys the crisscross, which is a little hard to do with the beads on there, but you can imagine it without the beads as well. Because some people don't like beads. Um, for me, it doesn't matter because the dreads don't really catch on anything, but if you've got. Um, 
fine hair or your hair gets tangled really easily, be careful what beads you're choosing to put on them because you don't want to be constantly like tangling your hair up and ripping your hair out. So, so a lot of people put like seashells and stuff on there and it can just be difficult to, it's already difficult enough to brush your hair with a hair wrap and much less when you've got a bunch of beads on it. So see, so I've got these three little beads just sticking out the side, really cute and simple. So this is my crisscross thread up here. I'm going to take it down and I'm literally just going to crisscross with it. And I'm going to have to work around the beads as I do so. Um, but I'm just going to take it in the front. And I want the cross not to land on the beads, so I'm going to kind of move it over to the side. And then I'm going to wind it around the back. And this is just for added decor. I'm going to cross it again. Cross it behind the bead. And again, like you could use that thicker cotton cording and then it would be more dramatic. I just wanted a really light effect for this one. You could use um, two different colors. You could use four strands, two of each color to make it thicker. Whatever you want to do, crisscross. Once you get to the bottom of the crisscross, um, what I usually do is just kind of tie it into a knot so that it doesn't unroll. But it's not necessary. You can just keep on, if you can keep it taut enough, so you've got these little X's. So there, I crisscrossed all the way through my beads. And then I'm actually not gonna tie into a knot this time. I'm just gonna crisscross it, put it back into the pile. And I'm gonna pick my next color, which is going to, you know, I might as well use that cream color since it's already out. And that's gonna help lock the crisscross in place. And I will just move on from there. So from here, you know, you can do a variety of these stitches, anything you want. So just keep working down the length of your hair up and then secure the end when you're done. And can you press stop again, Grace? Mm -hmm. Thanks, girl. <laughs> so the hair wrap is all done. And we've got some jingly beads on the bottom because why not? And then, you know, you can trim all the little threads that are sticking out and then I'm just going to cut it off right here at the top and um, trim out this white piece here. I'm going to leave this loop because that's how I'm going to attach it into my hair and then I'm going to show you I can put Erin's into her hair for her to show you guys how to do it in both a dread as well as just regular hair. Uh, okay guys so I put the last one in the dread and I'll show you what I did with when I put it into Erin's braid um, but basically I just found the root here and my roots are a little bit loose so I could stick my finger through at the root and I just pulled the loop of the uh, hair wrap through there and once I had the loop pulled I just pushed the rest of the hair wrap through the loop and pulled it tight so then it's just clamped around and basically I'm going to do the same thing for Erin with a tiny braid um, and then you could just take it out whenever you need to. If you want to wash your hair, I'm probably going to leave mine in there and just let them get ruined. Um, but yeah, I'm going to do one more, maybe. Maybe see if I can stop. And that's about it. I've been forgetting to show everybody. Okay. Okay. So we're going to put Erin's in her braids. Can you show me this braid in here? She put braids already into her hair. And um, she put a little tiny rubber band. Um, like one of those ones that you use for your braces, um, into the braid. And so then already she already kind of loosened up the top of the braid here. And it's almost the same as my dread, right? I can stick my finger through the top of the braid. And that's all I'm going to do is she's going to give me the hair up she specifically wants on this side. That's this way. Which has a little loop already. And I'm going to stick the loop through the braid. This is when it helps to have a friend so you're not tangling your hair. And I'm just going to take the end of the wrap and stick it back through the loop. You just want to make sure you get through the middle of the braid so it's not just around like a few strands of hair because that's when a big um, heavy hair up like this is going to rip the hair if you don't have enough to secure it. And I'm just working my way around all the beads. Do I have enough? Yes, ma'am. Perfect. Yeah, so don't, you know, don't, you know, when we say micro braids, use more than like five or six strands of hair, but sorry if I'm pulling your hair at all, Erin. That's okay. I'm working my way around the... So all I'm doing is slowly making my way down the length of the wrap, and then, yeah, just pull it. Wow. Yeah, that one came down a little bit, though. Oh, it did? Because you're 
Yeah, it was a little bit loose as far as the braid goes. All right. Well. So, do you, so depending on how tight you make this, it can be closer to the scalp. You can probably be take away. the rubber band. Mm -hmm. You can also rubber band it to make it a little bit tighter. Mm -hmm. Oh, all right. Exactly. Well, I don't need that right now. So totes her choice. And then here, there's her wrap. So we're going to do our other one. Okay. Here, I can shift. Oh, okay. This one's cute. Fine. See, Erin's are a little bit thinner because she doesn't have giant dreads. Look how cute this one is, guys. Look at all her beads. Mm. Okay, so up here, as high up towards the root as possible, we're just going to take it, push it through. This one's nice one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sky girl, you're oh challenging my. me. This is a tiny loop for all these people. It is? Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Oh my gosh, this one makes a jingle. Oh my gosh, Steph. She's got a giant leaf bead. I gotta work on getting through this loop. Shoot. It's okay, it's okay. It's gonna be fine. It will loosen. Mm -hmm. And then these might feel really stiff at first. Like this one feels really stiff, but... If they're soften over time, especially if you wash them with your hair. Oh my god. I'm just working my way up hers. Same way as before. I like this fabric in there. This brown one that's shiny. Yeah, I do too. I'm just finding little bits of... I'm sorry. <laughs> this one is really taut. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it was really aggressive. <laughs> yeah, you were. She must have tightened this one up. So this one thing, if you make them a little bit softer, they will be easier to put in. Oh my gosh, look at these feet. <laughs> yeah. I really like these ones. So these are stuck around here. So they hair, but it's in there. What is? Your hair out. It's just there's some other things stuck. Then there we go. That's it. She looks super cute. Voila. <laughs> Mermaid hair.